Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto and bringing out a bite-sized piece. Today, just the thumbnail suggests Solana is down yet again. And actually, this is the fourth time it's been down in the last 12 months. So we're going to take a look at why exactly it went down and what is potentially on the horizon. We're also going to take a look at how centralized Tether actually is as it freezes another account. And actually, they've been doing this for quite some time. And we're going to talk about how 300,000 users in Spain are going to get access to Bitcoin through their bank. And then finally, we'll take a look at Kevin O'Leary's project, WonderFi, as it buys an entire centralized exchange. Crazy. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today, it is uh, January 4th. Beautiful day here in Puerto Rico, about 82 degrees and uh, not too shabby as far as weather-wise. Market, eh, kind of sideways yet again. And actually, we've uh, taken a little bit of a tumble across the top 20 or so. I think the only coin that's actually up is like uh, Cosmos and ICP. But besides that, we're taking just little dips and little dips and little dips. And today is just 0.51%. And uh, what's what's interesting to me, though, is uh, the daily sentiment here. The daily sentiment from Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. You know, it, it, uh, it has a direct integration into uh, Twitter as far as an API, disseminates all these different uh, tweets. But it says that the sentiment is, is very bullish today, which I, I find very odd because we've got a fear and greed index of around 23, which means it's extremely fearful. So I don't know how that correlates, but right now I can tell you that in the short term, I don't think people are too exuberant about the market right now. I personally look at things, you know, three to five years down the road. So that's how I see things. But in the short term, I can see why people are like that. And actually, um, that was actually the sentiment uh, from uh, Peolita. This is uh, from uh, my Twitter account. And I had posted this this morning and he says, hey, you know what? As a, uh, as a late player in the game, I'm down 30 to 50% on all my coins. And I was like, you know what? That sounds eerily familiar because that is exactly my sentiment when I got in initially in 2017. And then like the next month in January and February, I was down like 60 to 80% all of a sudden. And it's just, it's amazing how things just kind of come full circle. And now here we are. And the same thing that I heard from all the different YouTubers out there, which used to infuriate me all the time, which was, it's going to change. Dollar cost average. Don't spend more than you can actually lose. Get into crypto. Hold. Hodl. And all those things. And I'm like, ugh. I remember back then how annoying that was, and now I get it after four plus years. And actually, this is exactly what I told uh, Paolita. I said, you know what, man? Um, I was in the exact same boat. February 2018, I said, I bought, you know, we just purchased this home here in, in uh, Puerto Rico. And I know it sucks right now, but hang in there because it's going to it's gonna change. And uh, of course, he's, you know, he says thanks and all those things. But I'm just here to tell you that, yeah, I know we've had some rocky months, but you can't look at things in the very short, short term. Uh, just take a look. Just take a look out and see where we're going. Things go up, things go down, but in the long run, everything should work out pretty well, depending on the project that you pick, which leads me to my first point. So if we take a look at this, soul control. And what we're talking about here is Solana going offline. Now, I'm not saying Solana is good or bad. I'm just reporting this is what it is. So here's the story, morning glory. Solana Network goes offline again, and it's a DDoS attack. Maybe the reason. DDoS attack, just tons of computers just start to just, just throw spam and, and all these different connections, and they just kind of just overwhelms the network, and it just shuts down. That's essentially it. My question is this, is for these DDoS attacks, like what's who's behind it? And we don't know who that is. And why did they do it? And it seems like a lot of these different products, I remember when Ethereum Classic actually went through this as well. And it got shut, it got uh, uh, bottled down as well. So it's just interesting now that we've seen this. It's not, this isn't the fourth DDoS attack. It's actually, this is the fourth time Solana has gone down. It's just interesting. So uh, moving forward, and I'll preface it with this. Everything I talk about in this channel, I own. So I own Solana. This actually is not my favorite topic to talk about, but it is the truth. So the fourth time in the last 12 months uh, has gone down. DDoS attack may be the main, may be the main reason behind the down time on the main network. Users suspect that spam has overloaded it, which is kind of weird because they can do, you know, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. The network did regain its functionality at 7 a.m. UTC. It went down at actually 2 a.m. Uh, UTC. So a good five hours it was down, but that's what it is. Users began to accuse network developers of the inability to maintain the stable functionality 
of Solana. And then lastly, it states, uh, while a slow network might be unpleasant when working with uh, decentralized solutions, full downtime was also the case for Solana previously. Back in September, the blockchain went offline after reaching 400,000 transactions per second. Now, there's a debate about uh, transactions per second and finality, but that's, not, that's beyond the scope of this video. Due to high congestion, the network forked itself and went down to start the blockchain again. Developers had to use the help of the validator community. And that's just, that's just another one of those um, segments where people were really looking at Solana, but harder going, you know what? If you can call up you know, all these different validators and just say, hey, shut it down or restart it, is it really decentralized? And really what you think about it is, does decentralized really matter? And before you answer that question, uh, do you own Binance coin? Because if you do, that is the most centralized coin you can possibly get. It seems like to me, and I, no one says this for some reason, but it seems like to me that when things are very central, we want them to centralize, but when they're, when, they're dis, when they're centralized in the beginning, no one says anything. It's very rare when things actually people are say something because if the price goes up, it seems like everybody's like, well, you know, we'd like it to be decentralized, but it's not, but the price is doing pretty well and my portfolio is looking great. Just saying, just saying. So uh, in, this, in, in this situation, what could happen in the future? I don't know, but I can just tell you that uh, basic investing is take a look at the project, make sure you like the team that's involved, make sure it actually does something, and uh, just take a look at the tokenomics. That's all I can really tell you. And uh, for me, no project is perfect. Uh, I, I don't care how many, how many transactions per second or how many developers are working with it or, or what kind of first mover advantage it has, the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything else that's in there. There is a fault on every single project that is out there. And it's up to you to do their own research to make sure that you have invested in the project that you think is going to do well in the long or short term. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece, Tether, which I never really understood why people love Tether so much. I, I only use USDC. I know some people say, well, I, I can only use Tether on this on this different exchange. Really? Is it only Tether? Can you can you use some other kind of stable coin? I, I'm not for sure. I mean, here in the States, it's pretty much Tether or USDC. I just use USDC. And this is this is it right here. So check this out. Tether freezes over a million dollars worth of USDT belonging to a single address. Crazy. So again, speaking of centralization versus decentralization, Tether blacklisted an Ethereum address last week that had over a million dollars of USDT balance in it. A Tether spokesperson told The Block that Tether regularly works with regulators for freezing addresses. Tether called the added blacklist function on December 30th to block this address with this transaction. You can take a look at it. I'll link in the description. Have fun. But Tether began banning blockchain addresses in 2017 and has blocked over 500 addresses to date on Ethereum. So look, I know these are some things that we don't really talk about or really uh, remember. I remember this a long time ago, actually. And it really just kind of just got in the back of my mind. But now you know, now you can, you are well aware that if you have Tether, they can be blocked anytime by the Tether Foundation. And that's just what they do because they work with law enforcement. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that is what it is. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And let's move on to our next one, which I got to tell you, this was pretty good. This is from my friend Brian down here in uh, Puerto Rico. He sent this to me. I thought it was great because, first of all, I know people don't like banks. So I like banks. I like people who work in banks. Banks, I mean, bank employees are fine. The banks and their and their philosophy is very flawed. Let's just be honest in, in some situations. I mean, credit unions and small banks, I don't want to get off a tangent. But remember, I don't care how you get to crypto and digital assets. I just want you here. The tent that we have for everybody to come in must be very broad and large. So if I have uh, a struggling family with four kids and, and mom and dad are working three jobs, I don't think they have time to research every nook and cranny of different products that are out there. If the bank can say, hey, you want Bitcoin? Here's some Bitcoin. You just get into this wallet thing. It's very, very super simple. Great. Let them do it. I don't care. As long as they can get here and then later on, maybe they can figure out exactly what it means to actually have like a cold wallet, cold wallet storage, the functionality of Bitcoin, the decentralization, everything else. Again, I don't care how you get here. So having prefaced it with that, here's the story. So Banca Generali will reportedly enable its over 300,000 customers to buy and sell Bitcoin over this year in a native integration with Coinio. I've never heard of them, that sounds good. 87 billion in assets is what is being managed by uh, Banca Generali. So that's pretty good. 
They've got over 300,000 customers, will soon be able to create a Bitcoin wallet directly in their bank account. That's awesome. So it's not just like a you know, Bitcoin ATM, they can do it in their bank account. They can probably look at things online. Maybe they can even help with custody, great. A feature made possible by Coinio. And then this last sentence, I need you to remember this last sentence because everybody thinks that there's a get rich quick and I've heard about these meme coin millionaires that are out there. So if I just get the right one, I can do it. Sure you can, uh, but it, there is no get rich quick seems. And even in crypto and digital assets, it's gonna take time. Listen to this. The two companies started a partnership in December, 2020 and will soon launch the new function. They are just talking about this right now as far as launching it. So if we can just kind of take a look at that and step back and go, okay, well, maybe I didn't get rich this week. Maybe I can wait six months, a year, three years, five years. Just puts things in perspective. Let me know what you think. Let's finish it all up with Kevin O'Leary as they buy a centralized exchange. And this is going to go quick. I actually got this in my email and I had covered WonderFi just about a week ago. It's, uh, it's over on Digital Asset News Clips. I don't on Digital Asset News is only the news per se. And I don't talk about the new projects that I'm getting into, the new metaverse plays, the new play to earn stuff. I do that over on Digital Asset News Clips. I don't even monetize that channel. So if you go there, you don't have to walk, watch any ads or anything like that. And this one, when I talked about um, WonderFi, I thought it was interesting and their white paper and their roadmap, how they laid it all out. And one of those, I was actually laughing at. I said, these guys think they're gonna buy a centralized exchange. Well. Look who's wrong. So this is what we got. WonderFi to acquire BitBuy, Canada's first approved crypto marketplace with over 4.4 billion transacted. BitBuy was founded in 2016, has grown to become one of North America's leading crypto marketplaces. Today, BitBuy is a trusted execution platform that services over 375,000 users. It's almost the same as the other one with more than 4.4 billion transacted to the platform. And Kevin O'Leary states this. This is a combination of two management teams with excellent executional skills that now have the bandwidth assets and licenses to provide an institutional grade compliant crypto platform to investors interested in exposure to centralized and financial reserves. Ah, man, what a, what a statement. So yeah, that's what's going on uh, in the world right now. So good for Wonderfy. I mean, look, they said they're gonna do it. They, I believe they said, and you can watch the video, I'll link in the description. They said they're gonna do it in Q1 2022. <laughs> like four days in they did it amazing so anyhow that's what's happening so if you like today's video found a little value give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today so thanks so much for watching i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one